She's emoting in front of the door. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. He's actually emoting in front of the door. Do you feel stuck at your current skill rank? If this is you, maybe what you need is a coach to set you on the right path and help you achieve your goals in no time. I'm going to be offering you a 15% discount on your first coaching session over on my website, coachhaze.com. If this is something that interests you, go ahead and visit the link down in the description and use discount code coachhaze101. I hope to see you there for some coaching, guys, and enjoy the video. What is going on, everybody? My name is Coach Hayes, and welcome to a new video. Today, we're going to be doing something very special. We're going to be looking at Fusion Uni. Again, it's been a long time since I've said those, those two words together. Um, they played yesterday. And, and as you can probably see already here, looking at the Fusion Uni roster, this is looking pretty stacked. Uh, they're pretty much smurfing in, uh, in Contenders Trials at the moment. Uh, probably a lot of you saw the announcement. They've got Shockwave from Fusion, um, Poco from Fusion, Astro from Fusion, Boombox, previous Fusion uh, support player, previous Young and Beautiful player, and then two other faces you'll probably also recognize. We've got Jkaru, the main tank, and we got Jiali. Lee, who is sugar free? On the other side, Team Disaster here, we've got Nico, ex of Watch League player, Kage, con very known contenders player, Henningsen, Sure, Momentum, Freyu, not too, uh, not too familiar with the support players, but I think the rest of the, the players here from Team uh, Disaster, I'm very familiar with. But yeah, Fusion Uni is looking pretty damn stacked. It's kind of crazy, actually, how stacked this roster is. They are basically smurfing in Contenders Trials. So I'm going to do my best to try and break down this game and talk about anything kind of interesting that I see. Probably explain through how these compositions are being played, why they're doing this, why they're making the certain rotations, why they're making the certain moves that they do to try and give you guys an insight. Um, so let's get into this. And uh, just before we get into it, it is going to be slightly scuffed today. Um, I have broken my wrist, so not going to be at full operational speed today, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, so Fusion Uni taking, making the rotation. Little simple TP out onto the high ground here. We know that Double Bubble, or, or at least most of you guys know if you watch my videos, this is one thing I repeat a lot of the time. Double Bubble is all about establishing this position on the high ground. Because of the lack of mobility from the Brig, from the Ana, from the Zarya, you need to have them set up in a, in a strong position. And why not set up on a high ground position, right? High ground is the best position for you to set up. It gives you the best line of sight. It gives you a safe position to play from. So we see Fusion Uni straight away taking the high ground here and Team Disaster also fighting for this high ground um, on this platform here. Fusion Uni are moving the cart. And one thing we're going to be looking out for here in this composition is, is how the teams play around the, the Winston engages with the Zarya bubbles because this is, this is crucial. This is a lot about how to enable your Zarya, right? Because you're giving your Zarya charge. You're also enabling your Winston to go in aggressively and farm some Primal. And you're also enabling your Ana to build that, that Nano. So we're seeing here, Poco gives the bubble into Jkaru. Jkaru goes in. Jkaru tries to get back and rotate around in towards the team there. And as you can see, the rest of the team there following up, Fusion Uni following up around this position and trying to get in position to help there. Um, Jkaru does get stunned by Momentum and gets taken down. And this is one thing the Winston players have to be incredibly careful of when they're playing this comp. If you are playing a Winston versus a McCree, Anna, and a Brig, you're going to have to be incredibly careful um, because that is a lot of CC that's going to be coming your way and you've got to be got to be on your toes and making sure you try and avoid that McCree flashbang, avoid the, fla avoid the sleep, and also avoid the, the Brig bash. So we're seeing Nano here coming up from Team Disaster, and, and Henningsen is established on the blue box. As you can see, Fusion Uni here are trying to take this blue box. Again, because why? Well, because the high ground is the key here for this comp, and that's why they're taking this high ground position, because 
it provides them with the best line of sight for the Ana. It provides them with a good position for Poco to look for these bubbles. And it gives them a good position as a kind of like a base for them to operate from. Jackaroo's going in with a Nano. Uh, sorry, um, Henning's going in with the Nano. Managed to get Funny Astro. He's a little bit isolated here. You see the follow-up there from, from Team Disaster. One other thing that a lot of uh, teams don't understand when they're playing Double Bubble is this comp is not just a dive comp. You know, when your Winston goes in, you need to provide that support. And that's why you see Team Disaster following up on the back of Henningsen's engage here on the back of the Nano, because he needs that support. It's pointless to have your Zara and your core set back here if the rest of the team is engaging. Trigger free, just pushing the payload in. We see Fusion here, Fusion Uni here, trying to get back on this high ground position. Still no Nano from Fusion Uni. Are they going to make this rotation in? Trigger Free's in a very, very good position there. I think Henderson's is dead. Okay, he, wow, he's not dead. He's saving Primal there. That was really close. Actually, uh, Sugar Free is doing a really good job here on the Tracer of just trying to deny as much space as possible here for Henningsen. I actually feel like it might be better if, if uh, Team Disaster set up a lot more aggressively on the front here or potentially on the high ground here at the back here. I feel like this is a good position to have Urana. That's an absolutely huge grab from Poco. Grab comes out, it's a four man. And that should be, yeah, that should be the cap. So let's go back and rewatch this just, just quickly. All economy is also incredibly important for this. This comp pretty much just plays around alts most of the time. So the key alts we have to look out for here is going to be your Rally, your Nano, your Grav, and your Primal. Face of Pulse is important, and so is Bob. But realistically, the four primary alts are going to be your, your Nano, your Rally, your Primal, and your Grav. So on the side of Fusion Uni here, they've got Grav Pulse, which is a strong combo, obviously, to go with. Notice here how Fusion Uni haven't quite pushed in yet. The difference being Fusion Uni are running this Ash. And this Ash, if she can get on this high ground, this is a very strong position for her, right? She can provide line of sight and cover all of this area here. Um, whereas the McCree is a bit more restricted in, the, in his uh, sight lines. He has to play inside this server room. He has to play in a position where he has he's not being contested by the Ash sight lines. Because in a 1v1, right, Ash versus McCree, surely the Ash is going to win at the mid to long range. And so I like how I like how Fusion have taken space here. The Bob is put on point here to contest. They've got multiple angles of attack. Look at this. They've got one angle of attack from the Bob here towards point. They've got another angle of attack from the Ash from high ground. And then as you can see, the core here is rotating inside of the server room to get that collapse. I assume that Jkaru also, also wanted to come in from this side, potentially push through the front. Um, but as you can see there, Nico is doing a decent job of trying to deny Jkaru. The pulse. So really, really nice nice use of taking the space there for uh, Fusion Uni. Executed this methodically, gradually took the space, and then executed with ults as well. So here we see... Fusion Uni already trying to get established here on the high ground. There's the core moving into position. This is a good setup. Why are they having J why are they having Jali Jali push? Well, because Jali is the most mobile person. He's the most mobile person that can push this payload and still follow up into position. Um, it doesn't make sense for Fusion to have anyone else on payload because Winston needs to drop down to pressure. Zara needs to be in position to establish a core on the high ground. 
Ash needs to be in a good position to look for DPS and look for picks. And the Anna and the Brig also need to be playing with the Zarya here in the in the middle, in the core, um, to control this high ground position. So it, it does make the most sense for Jolly to be pushing this. Let's watch one of the um, one of the engagers from Fusion Uni. Let's see how they're using their bubbles. Poco finding those angles for that for that spam. Looks like looks like disaster trying to rotate up through this high ground here. This this doesn't look like a good idea to me, just because. What the Fusion Uni have here, they have all of this high ground control. They have all of this high ground here where they can stop and deny deny Disaster from pushing in here. So the question is, if if they if Team Disaster cannot push up through here, where can they go to try and get in here? Because this is definitely pretty tough for them. Right? The, the the difficult thing about this comp is when when Double Bubble is set up in a good position, it is incredibly difficult to get them out of position unless you have an alt advantage. So that's two down now for that's two down now for Fusion Uni. They clearly have a big advantage right now. Three down. That should be it. Rally use from Funny Astro. And there's a the cleanup. Fusion Uni doing an incredible job of just trying to snowball this position. Using using the late spawns here, look, getting the late picks. Oh, they get asleep onto him as well. They're gonna stagger Shu even further. And that's gonna that's also gonna have an incredible impact on this third point too. Because that's now gonna allow all of Fusion Uni to start establishing establishing position. Broombox setting up on top, Poco setting up on top, Shockwave's quite aggressive here. He's gonna he's gonna coach come back. And we see here Fusion Uni again, they're putting so much priority on this establishing position. Bob comes out from Fusion Uni. Decent Bob position. Shockwave's in a very dominant position up here. Team Disaster get a pretty decent engage here. Let's have a look. So Team Disaster have Rally to work with and Pulse Bomb. Primal coming up pretty soon. Hennington goes in. Get Saria Bubbles. Hennington getting some good pressure here on the supports. How's that Primal? Primal getting a lot of value there. Okay, so pretty much Henningsen just created a lot of space here with his Primal. Managed to get on top of uh, Boombox and Funny Astro, forced them back, managed to get the cleanup, and then that allowed the rest of Team Zaster to push forward here. Team Zaster now the team in control. The difference here being between these two teams is that Team, Dis team Disaster haven't actually taken the initiative here to take the high ground control yet. They seem to be just focused on playing low ground here and having having Henningsen and uh, Nico take the high ground. Which is a little bit surprising to be honest. I would I would usually see you would usually see this core either play on top here with the rest of the team or even potentially playing on this position here. Um, I'm not sure why they're not playing this position. Let's see how this is going to have an impact. Fusion Uni do have the auto advantage here. They have Nano, they have Grav. Grav comes out, just max range Grav there, manages to get all of uh, all of Team Disaster. And that was dominant. That was pretty decisive from Fusion Uni. Absolutely no hesitation there with that Grav.
I know Lucio. I don't see them winning this one. Oh, look at that prediction. Yeah, so pretty pretty straightforward, honestly. Fusion took the advantage. They they were struggling a little bit on the first point. Uh, mostly because Team Disaster had position control. But you saw that as soon as Fusion won that first fight, they they did not let go of the uh let go of let go on the gas. They continued pushing and, and applying that pressure with a position. We saw on second point they would move up, they would take position in the ship, which made it hard for Team Disaster. On third point, we saw the same thing. They moved up, they took position, which made it hard for Team Disaster. In terms of alt economy, they're being very decisive as well. They have decisive plans and they execute quickly, which is, seems to be catching Team Disaster off guard. So, so far in terms of positioning, uh, obviously, yeah. Fusion Uni have a significant advantage with their positioning. Um, alt, alt usage as well, they're very, very decisive in terms of execution. Let's see how they get on on defensive. Just going to watch Jkaru for, for a little while. I haven't seen Jkaru in a, in, a, in a while, so I want to see if anything has changed. Well, that's a free, that's a free twenty-five percent on alt charge. You got to be happy with that. Nice preset nade from Boombox hits all of, almost all of uh, Team Disaster. How are they going to play this differently from Fusion Uni, uh, from Team Disaster? Hey, Jake Aru is opting to peel here instead of, instead of pressuring the core. A little bit of miscommunication there between. Poco and Jkaru. Fusion Uni just seem to be trying to focus on controlling this high ground. And this Ash is putting so much pressure. I feel like this, this Ash might be the, one of the difference makers here between the two teams. Because... Shockwave is just having so much more impact here on the Ash. He's putting, applying so much more pressure with the Dynamites. Whereas I don't feel like Kage is getting too much value here on his McCree. That Dynamite is constant pressure, constant farming of the Bob. Grav comes out very, very quickly from Poco. Gets the grab onto the rotating of uh, the rotating team of Team Disaster, and so there's there's a downside also to this Ash. This Ash is farming so so quickly the Nano for Team Disaster that they get this very quick Nano. Um, Oh, that's really nice. Astro goes inside the bubble, manages to get the stun, and gets the gets the whip shot. So Henningsen's out of the fight here. Nano is now essentially um, is is useless. Poco goes with a grab. Obviously, this grab is huge. And Henningsen Henningsen does get back into the fight, but by this point, it's it's already lost. It's already done. Both Winston's getting the primal available. Fusion Uni do still have this this nano, which is going to be a difference maker for them. The question now for for Team Disaster is where well, where do they rotate? If they go underneath here through this stairway, I don't see them winning this. I think that's going to be very very difficult. So I'm really interested to see where they're going to rotate now. They look a bit confused. Are they going to go underneath? 
Trace is pushing. You see Sugar Free there contesting. Henningson goes in. Henningson has Primal. We see Nano comes out onto Jkaru. Bob comes out as well. A lot of pressure here coming down. Jkaru wants the kill here. He's going to get it. And you see here how quickly the rest of Fusion Uni are following up on this. As soon as they get those advantages, they are pushing forward here and trying to really push this advantage. Um, Poco's here, Shockwave's here, Jali and Shockwave are following up. Funny Astro and Boombox are just kind of chilling on the high ground there. But trying to push this advantage and get more. And they're going to get all of them. Oh, Kage takes two down with him. So Kage actually did pretty well there. He took took two with them. And this is going to force Fusion Uni back. It's going to force Fusion Uni to reset this. Fusion Uni just trying to get away with their lives at this point. All economy, what do we see here? Well, we see Poco has grab. He's just used the grab. Poco's grabs have been huge. And you see how decisive he's being with these grabs as well. He's not he's not hesitating. He's not messing around. So he goes with the grab first. He forces Shu to use a grab in response. Um, Rally comes down from both teams. Both teams survive the grab. Pulse Bomb comes out from Team Disaster. Huge bubble there from Poco. Saving the bubble. Gets the bubble. Huge deny on the Pulse Bomb there. But they still go down. So this was actually a big win for this was a big win for Team Disaster. Grav traded, Rally traded, and they won the point. And unfortunately, Poco's heroic heroics couldn't couldn't save this for them. Again, we see that Fusion Uni just so consistent at taking this position. And I'm I'm mentioning this point so much because it's so important to double bubble. Like it's all about position. If you don't take high ground position as double bubble, you're missing 80% of what makes this comp strong. This comp is very, very weak if you have low ground position because it's punishable. If you have high ground position, you can choose the time when you want to engage and Obviously, you can engage on your terms when your comp is ready. Bubble comes out onto Jkaru. Poco just out of range here, but throwing some right clicks there to pressure. Again, like, uh, this, is, this is so tough for Team Disaster. Like, they have to try and somehow get on this high ground. Um, the only way I see them coming back from this is with an ult advantage. They need to find a way of actually getting an engage here with ults to create some space to allow the core to move in. But right now, as you can see, they don't have an ult advantage. Yes, Diali is uh, sugar free. As you can see right now, they don't have an ult advantage. this position from Fusion Uni. They're just controlling all of the map here. Should Poco follow up? Well, yeah. It, 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 basically, I'll explain to you like the thought process you should have on every single character in this comp. So let's take a look and let's walk through this. How, what kind of thought process you should have. Well, the first thing is we're all in position. We're all established in position. Right now, let's take a look. Do, which team has an advantage? Um, Fusion Uni using Bob. Bobble goes down onto Jkaru. 
Poco sees that Team Disaster are very contained over here in this position over there. So he's moving forward to try and get in a position to follow up. Now he sees already by the time he's in a position here, but they have two kills. So they already have a significant advantage. This fight is basically won at this point. So Poco is not afraid of going forward and following up here. Poco is just reading the information. He's reading the player advantage here. He sees Momentum and Freyu are down, giving Fusion Uni a plus two advantage. So he's moving forward and he's trying to follow up on this. He's not afraid. And obviously at this point, you know, there's five dead. Just one tracer left. She disengages, she gets away. So essentially, you, you need to be reading the tempo of the fight to decide if you should be engaging or not. In that example, because they had two kills, there's no reason that all of Fusion Uni can't just collapse onto the team disaster. Why? Because they have the advantage, right? If you're two up, you should be pushing the fight and you should be trying to take a fight because you have that advantage. So again, we see Team Disaster trying to t get control of this high ground here, trying to take top. And it, 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 it really seems like Team Zasta having so many problems here just trying to get control of this high ground back. When Astro gets the boop onto Henningsen just before he gets in, denying that, denying that jump. Again, he gets the same one. So quick with, that, with those whip shots. And Astro's in trouble. Or is he? Brig is not going to die, Henningsen. <laughs> oh, he's teabagging him as well. <laughs> to be fair, Astro actually just dominated him there. Three whip shots. And Henningsen's ego was in bits there. He had to follow up on that. He had to try and get Astro, but he couldn't quite get it. All right, let's see what's going on here. What's this shenanigans? Alt, 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 alt advantage. Which team has alt advantage? I think it's safe to say that Fusion Uni have alt advantage right now. They have Nano, Rally, Primal, Pulse, and Bob. And what do uh, Team Zasta have? Well, they only have High Noon and Pulse Bomb. They have Grav 2. They have Grav Pulse. Um, but there's a lot of cooldowns. There's a lot of ults here on the side of Fusion Uni that they have to be aggressive. And so it seems like they're recognizing they have the ultimate tempo. The ultimate tempo is basically when a team understands if they have the advantage or not. And they try and push this advantage. A little bit surprised that Astro dropped down, actually. Okay. They're just going aggressive. Yeah, they're just... Oh, is that 6k from Shockwave? She's emoting in front of the door. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. He's actually emoting in front of the door. In the Trials game. L literally smurfing on the poor guys. Is there anything more crushing than seeing like seeing that? Like, can you imagine coming out of spawn as Nico and like, just seeing like fucking Brig emote that emoting there? <laughs> like, look at that. And he's not even dying either. There we go. Jake Aru is going for a sneaky little play here. That's the primal. He's not worried about going deep. I think he's dead. Yeah, he's so dead. It 
It really seems like Fusion just having some fun now. Huge splash damage, gets slept. Jekaru goes a little deep. Yeah, high noon is no, no stopping that one. But you can see here, Fusion are just fighting for this high ground. They are not giving them... They're not giving them uh, any space to operate. And this is exactly how you want to play the comp. You need to be dominating these high grounds. You need to be foxy on. Being aggressive when you have ults to be aggressive with. Oh, Astro's coming for him. I know for a fact Astro was screaming here. Go to the spawn! Go to the spawn! Nano comes out. I suppose this game just kind of highlights to everybody how important position is for Double Bubble. Like, it's all about taking these positions and, and establishing control and trying to understand where the attacking team can retake from. Right, where can the attacking team retake this high ground from? There's only one option for them. The option is going to be this high ground here. They're going to have to retake through here. But can you imagine trying to retake through this small uh, room when Fusion has a complete setup around this doorway? This is a very horrible choke point for them to come through. Um, the same here on second point. This is pretty rough, right? Like, imagine being team uh, disaster trying to get through these doorways, through these choke points. This is tough. This is very tough them to get through here so really good job by fusion obviously recognizing how strong these positions are and just focusing on controlling them and, and denying them from team disaster um obviously yeah a little bit unfair this this game is a little bit unfair because obviously a lot of Overwatch league pros but still i think it's this game is a really good way of highlighting how important position is um for you in double bubble that's going to be the end of the review for today if you guys did enjoy this video and you'd like to watch more, go ahead, check my other videos out. Um, if you enjoyed this one, drop a like and also consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you all for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.